And Jonathan, this morning we're, we're focusing really on three different ways to go wrong. And these are three things to avoid. <laughs> the first was pressure. Okay, peer pressure in the case of Israel wanting a king. The second was power. The, the, the deception of great power when we're given power in any circumstance. It is just too easy to make ourselves the center of the universe versus serving. As, as our centerpiece. And the third we're going to get into when we get into the story of King David falling to temptation. But before we do that, we have a call. So let's take that call. Welcome to Christian Questions. This is Jonathan and Rick. Who are we speaking with? Good morning, gentlemen. This is Julius, and I again wish you a happy new year. Happy Good. new year to you. You and your families, and a successful year. Thank you. Oh, what a great question. <laughs> a lot of answers, aren't there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of people have fallen down the wayside, haven't they? You know, uh, you remind me of uh, last week's uh, uh, lesson uh, and the, the, some of the points that we mentioned last week, uh, like the, the gentleman that wrote the, the decline and fall of the Roman Empire. Right. Remember? Yes. Where did they go wrong? And uh, he list, uh, you know, I, I heard them listed. Uh, I really actually did not read the book myself. I understand that called the library. There are two volumes to it. It's so so extensive. But uh, yeah, uh, remember uh, the uh, observe the situation right now. Is is uh, all this political debate? Is mm-hmm. you know which one of them could promise the administration of perfect justice? I mean, you know, I give them credit. They have good intentions. All of these uh, political aspirants, you know, they, they, I want to be president. I want to be, but uh, what a challenge that, that it is to administer, uh, you know, a, a government uh, fairly and justly. And uh, uh, isn't it fascinating that our great country has been so blessed, has been so successful, among all others, because in some fashion they endeavor to copy the values, uh, the methods that Jehovah God established. Isn't that a, a true observation? Yeah, I, I think that there's validity to that, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, the the, uh, the the Ten Commandments, some of the... the uh, the uh, values and uh, guidelines, uh, certainly they're, they're based upon the Ten Commandments. But uh, <laughs> you remember my old pet peeve? Yes, I Judge do. Moore, Judge Moore in Montgomery, Alabama. Mm-hmm. He wanted the Ten Commandments in the uh, in the courthouse. And they not only threw out the Ten Commandments, they got rid of him. <laughs> nice job, huh? Yeah. Uh, oh, incidentally, uh, pressure, power, I, th- I think. I don't know if it's the original you were asking where that uh, power corrupts absolutely, power corrupts absolutely. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, my recollection is, remember years ago there was a, a, a mini a revolution in China, it was in Beijing, where Tiananmen Square? Yes. I think I've heard that uh, quotation from there. Hmm. I don't know if it originated there, but uh, I'm pretty sure it, it, was, it was uttered, it was mentioned there. Conjunction with the the uh, that uh, mini revolution in China, it didn't get anywhere. Remember, it didn't yeah. go very far. Right, right. But anyway, uh, to sum it up, uh, another of my favorite scriptures, Proverbs, Proverbs fourteen twelve. There is a way that seemeth right unto man, but the ends thereof lead to death. That's when we. Uh, you know, uh, uh, think that uh, we're smarter than God. That's what, what happens. That's what happened with Israel, you know, right. as, as you already mentioned so nicely. Thanks for sharing the wonderful topic. God bless. Thank you, Julius. We appreciate your call. You're welcome. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye-bye. And, Jonathan, that scripture, actually, that he quoted at the end is, is very appropriate. Uh, there is a way that seemeth right to a man, but the end thereof or is, is death or destruction. It doesn't lead to any place good. And we'll see that right now as we read, the, read the, the one of the events in King David's life that caused amazing grief. And that's found in 2 Samuel 11, 2 through 11. It happened late one afternoon when Daniel rose from his couch and David was... David rose. I'm sorry. David <laughs> rose from his couch and was walking about on the roof of the king's house. And he saw from the roof a woman bathing. 
The woman was very beautiful. David sent someone to inquire about the woman. It was reported, This is Bathsheba, daughter of Elam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite. So David sent messengers to get her, and she came to him, and he lay with her. Now she was purifying herself after her period. Then she said, um, then she returned to her house. The woman conceived, and she sat and told David, I am pregnant. So David sent word to Joab, send me Uriah the Hittite. And Joab sent Uriah to David. When Uriah came to David, David asked how Joab and the people fared and how the war was going. Then David said to Uriah, Go down to your house and wash your feet. Uriah went out of the king's house, and there followed him a present from the king. But Uriah slept at the entrance of the king's house with all the servants of his lord and did not go into his house. Did I skip a line? No, no, you're good. Okay. When they told David, Uriah did not go down to his house, David said to Uriah, You have just come from a journey. Why did you not go down to your house? Uriah said to David, The ark and Israel and Judah remain in booths, and my lord Joab and the servants of my lord are camping in the open field. Shall I then go to my house to eat and drink and to lie with my wife? As you live and as your soul lives, I will not do such a thing. And Jonathan, we we sort of abbreviated the story. It continues because David says, okay, didn't work. So he gets Uriah drunk and he tells him, go down to your house again. And Uriah sleeps on the doorstep. Why won't Uriah go? Integrity. Because the nation is at war. He came from the battlefront where all of his comrades are fighting. And he's saying to the king, who incidentally should have been out there with them. At the battle. Right. Mm -hmm. Saying, how can I go to the comfort of my own home when my brothers are out fighting this bloody war? Shouldn't, Shouldn't be, I won't do it. And you're right, integrity sums it up. That's what Uriah was. So David ends up sending a message in Uriah's own hand with instructions on how to have him killed. Mm. So you have a huge, huge mess that King David has, uh, has, has perpetrated upon himself. And again, one word, Jonathan, what was it that got David into so much trouble? Passion. It was his passion. Uh, David's passion was ignited by his power. Okay, First of all, he wouldn't have been in the position to have his passion ignited had he not been elevated to this, to this, this, this stance of uh, unhealthy power as king.